Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. We take you now to the lineup. <laughs> Out of my mind. Fine, Mrs. Atwood, a fine. All we want you and Mr. Bush to do is identify him. Mm -hmm. Here, sit down here. Uh, uh, where do I sit, Lieutenant? Uh, right next to me. Oh, yes. yes thank you. Now, I said to myself, Mr. Bush, now there's a face you'll never forget. Oh, those hit-and-run drivers, I tell you. Not a hit-and-run driver, Mr. Bush. The driver of that car was a murderer. May I have your attention, please? Premeditated. You people out there on the other side of the wire, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their names and charge. If you have any identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of the line, when I call for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identification. Well, he had the face of a killer, a real mean when face. The Just as long here, as you remember what he looks like. They are the bathroom and dress back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, all right. Right down to the end of the stage. Okay, okay, that's far enough. Turn around and face front. You, the second man, face the audience. That's it. Hands to your sides, all of you. Look straight ahead so the people out there can see you. Number one, Augie Fosse, theft. Where do you live, Augie? The usual place. Where's that? Bow Jungle. It's under the bridge outside of town. What were you doing when the officer arrested you? Well, I was asking a lady for a handout at the back door. With a gun in your hand? Well, I was just asking her to hold it so I could hold her pocketbook so she could get me something to eat. Number two, Melvin Cornell, vacancy. Where do you live, Melvin? Westfall Hotel on Clover. Where were you when the officer arrested you? Standing in front of the Westfall Hotel on Clover. What were you doing there? I was shifting my feet, getting ready to walk. Where were you going? I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. Number three, Lyle Brooks, theft. Where do you live, Lyle? 3,000 to help. That, that's him, Lieutenant. What were you doing number three, with the him. And, and, and the one pocket. before him, uh, number two, I'm sure of it. Oh, uh, hold it, Sergeant. Uh, right. Let's see number two again. Okay, sir. Step out here, Melvin. Turn around, Melvin. Slowly, slowly. That's it. Okay, that's enough. That's him. That's the man. Now, what about it, Mr. Bush? No, Evelyn, now, please. Now, just a moment. I, I, I have to consider... I tell you, that's him. I tell, that's the man I saw run down that girl. How could I forget that face? Lieutenant, that's the man. Now, hold for interrogation, Sergeant. Right. Huh. Is that all you want with me, Lieutenant? No, you come with me. You too, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Right, Mr. Bush? No, thank you. No, I never smoke. And please don't offer me a glass of water either. I don't need or want a thing. Uh, me neither, Lieutenant. Relax, Melvin. I know what you're after, Lieutenant. And I may as well tell you. No amount of catering to what you think are my desires will make me identify this man. Much as it would please you. But Mrs. As... Atwater here identified him. She's sure. She's positive. Mrs. He... Atwater was wrong, aren't you, Mrs. Atwater? You're dead wrong don't because he... Don't you run and hit her, you murderer. Stay where you are, Melvin. I'm not going to hurt Mrs. Atwater. Mrs. Atwater's a fine lady, aren't you, Mrs. Atwater? You couldn't have seen me driving that car, Mrs. Atwater. I don't know how to drive a car. So how could I steal a car? Mr. Bush, tell Mrs. Atwater she didn't that say That man me. is the man, Lieutenant. I'll swear to it. I'll never forget his face, never. One day I shall describe him to my grandchildren. You will be deceiving them, Mrs. Atwater, because that poor man is not the man. The man who was driving the murder car was fat. He was lean, like this man here, this Melvin. You will forgive me for differing with you, Mrs. Atwater? But the man in the car that ran down that girl was fat. I have seen fat people in my life, and he was fat. And you need eyeglasses. He was lean. He was this Melvin here. My eyes are in perfect order. He was fat. 
What's more, he had unneat blonde hair. He needed a haircut. He was bald. He was bald and he was lean. He was Melvin. Melvin is bald and like lean. Like your brain, Mrs. Atwater. The man was heavy. Even in all that rain, it was very well, obvious. You are heavy. You are Stop back. it, both of you. Yeah. Stop it. He, um, That's all. You may go. Out that door. He insulted me in front of a murderer. Please. You've made a jackass of yourself, haven't you, Mrs. Atwater? <laughs> How about me, Lieutenant? You too. Out. And, uh, we're sorry. Oh, forget it. You know, things like this happen. Forget it. This is the way out, huh? <laughs> Never went out this way before. Ah, forget it, little son. Matt. Yeah, Ben. Where is everybody? Ah, let him go. Melvin, too? Yeah. But that woman identified him. Ben, a girl was deliberately run over. We know that because two witnesses saw the car stop, back up, and run over her body once more to make sure she was dead. Yesterday, on August 2nd, a girl was murdered. Elaine Kirk was murdered. Anything else, Matt? A woman identified the murderer, and you let him go? Mm-hmm. He stole the car and murdered that girl, Ben. You through? Yeah, yeah. What do you want with me, Ben? We're going to have to do it the hard way. Neither Bush nor that a woman saw the man who was driving that car. They were just trying to be important. We're going to have to do it the hard way. Oh? Well, what can I do, Ben? You got that engagement book we found on Elaine Kirk? Oh, it's in my office. Get it, Matt. I'm going to keep Elaine Kirk's engagements. What can I do for you? I'm from the police, Ben Guthrie. So, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Frank Bennett. Why? Is he in? Don't you catch on? I'm Frank Bennett. What do you want to see me about? About a girl named Elaine Kirk. In here. About a girl named Elaine Kirk. You know she's dead, don't you? I know. In her belongings was an engagement book. On yesterday's date, August 2nd, was your name. Did you see her yesterday? She wrote it down, eh? Did you see her? Yeah, sure I did. We had cocktails yesterday afternoon about five. That's too long ago, eh? My prints wouldn't be on the glass now, eh? What was the occasion? She called me yesterday morning, said she wanted to see me, and I always said yes to Elaine. Whatever she asked me to do, I said yes. All right. What about yesterday? Well, the cocktail, she told me that she was going to get married. Why should she single you out to tell? Because once I'd been there myself. Once she was telling her friends that she was going to marry me. And it didn't work out? Well, her friends said it another way, but uh, didn't work out, does it, nicely? Yeah, wait a minute. To tell you she was going to get married yeah. to a man named uh, David Finley? Him. Mm-hmm. His name's on the list, too. Lucky him. You know this David Finley? Well, I've got nothing against him, Mr. Guthrie, except that he got the last kiss in the world from Elaine Kirk. I don't know why. I'll never know why, but that's the way it was. Not to a guy like David, not a girl like Elaine. A special kind of girl, wasn't she? That'll do it nicely, too. Say, uh, do something for me, Mr. Guthrie. What? Talk to David Finley. I was going to. Then come back and explain to me why Elaine should give her life to him. David's at his desk doing his work. He's an accountant, you know, one of the best. That's his room, Mr. Guthrie. Just go right in. Thank you. Uh, may I ask who you are? I wondered you didn't ask right off, Lieutenant. I'm Dorothy Finley, David's sister. Don't keep David away from his work too long. Be with you in a minute. Just want to total this column of figures. I'll go right ahead. That does it. Only take a second to enter it now. I don't know you, do I? Someone recommended you to me? I'm Ben Guthrie from the police. About Elaine? Is that why you're here? That's right. Your name was in her engagement book. You saw her yesterday? I saw her. When? She came for dinner at 7. It was an occasion. Kind of a anniversary. What kind? Personal. How long did she stay? Until 10 o'clock. Then she went away. She walked down a long street. Death was waiting for her. If I'd known, I wouldn't have let her go. You were going to be married? We were going to be married. 
David... I didn't think it was right we should get married. No? No. You never saw Elaine, did you? No, I mean, when she was... No, you never spoke to her. You weren't fortunate like me. You only saw her when death made her ugly, huh? David, we... You never saw her the other way. And you'd know that when I told her was right, she shouldn't marry me. Not me. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Guthrie. Did she ever mention anyone? Talk about anyone? Elaine is dead. What are you staring at? Nothing. Hmm. Didn't you know, Mr. Guthrie? I'm a cripple. From the waist down. I have to use my crutches to show you to the door. What is it? Uh, my name is Ben Guthrie. Yes, Mr. Guthrie. What can I do for you? I'm from the police. What do you want? Can we go inside? No, we can't. What do you want? I'm trying to locate a girl named Janet Irish. I'm her mother. Her name was on a list. Uh, it's important that I see her, Mrs. Irish. You can't. No one can see her. No more. No one sees Janet. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to insist. Insist, then. Listen to me. I... Janet is dead. Janet is dead, Mr. Guthrie. She was killed. Killed? How? A hit-and-run driver killed her. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that a girl named Elaine Kirk had Janet's name on her appointment list. Yes. She came here yesterday. To yeah. console me. Yes? Yesterday was the anniversary of my daughter's death. Yesterday, on August 2nd, Janet had been dead a year. Abraham Lincoln once spoke of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Members of the armed forces are as dedicated to the proposition of maintaining this government today as were those soldiers who sacrificed their lives on the battlefield of Gettysburg during the war between the states so many years ago. They know that as U.S. citizens in uniform, our military personnel have definite responsibilities to their God, to their country, and to themselves. Oh, come in, Matt. Come in. Did you find anything? Oh, newspaper clippings, file reports, nothing very satisfactory. All right, let's have it. Well, it's just about what Mrs. Irish told you. A year ago, her daughter Janet was hit by a car. The car didn't stop. Janet died on the way to the hospital. The car, the driver of the car was never found. Mm. No wonder Mrs. Irish was bitter when I told her I was from the police. Yeah, no wonder. She told me Elaine Kirk had stopped in to offer condolences. Well, people do that. But doesn't it bother you that they were both killed by hit-and-run drivers? <sighs> yeah, it bothers me. What do you think? I don't know. You spoke to the man who owned the car that killed Elaine, didn't you? Sure, sure. The car was stolen, all right. He and his wife went to the movies with some friends, parked the car, left the keys. When they got out of the movies, the car was gone. Uh, nothing there, huh? Except the man was screaming when they found the car later because his fender was bent. I bleed for him. Let's go back a minute, Matt. We were saying that Janet and Elaine were probably friends. That fact keeps throwing itself at me. And both killed the same way. You uh, can call it coincidence. Would you? How do you expect me to answer that, Ben? I don't know anything more about this than you do. I know, I know. The thing to do is to find out. Two girls, friends. If their manner of death was not a coincidence, what was it? What secret, what thing did they share together? If you could find that out. Yes, if I could find that out. Well, I'm going to try. A neat trick, Ben. How are you going to do it? Elaine Kirk was going to marry a man. A man named David Finley. Maybe she loved him enough to tell him her secrets.
What is... Oh, it's you, Lieutenant. I'm glad you've come back. I wanted you to come back. I wanted you to come back. Your brother, Miss Finley. Uh, may I talk to him, please? He's not here. He's at the athletic club swimming pool. He swims there every day for exercise because he's... I know, I know. Of course you know. Everyone knows about David. He's so brave and good. So efficient, so... so helpless. I drive him to the pool every day. I'm going back to pick him up in a little while. Well, I'll come back a little later then. Uh, will you tell David... No. I... Oh, please, don't go. But, Miss Finley, I... Uh, just tell David that I... When I'll... I tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'll bet you won't go. Mm. Well, what is it, Miss Finley? I'm in the house. Well, what do you want to tell me? I murdered Elaine Kirk. Come in the house, Lieutenant Guthrie. We can go into David's room. He doesn't mind. He lets me help him. Lets me do the things I want to do. They're always for him. For David. Sit right there in David's chair, Lieutenant. You said you murdered Elaine. I didn't mean to murder. He loved her so. He loved her so much. She was so beautiful. You won't tell him I killed him. Why did you do it? I don't know. Somewhere deep inside my brain, there must have been a hate for her. Big enough to make me kill her. Big enough to make... Miss Finley. Now, Miss Finley. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be brave like David. I'm all right now. I'm all right. Do you realize what you've said to me? Yes, it was murder. As if I'd committed it with my own hand. What? As if I'd struck her down with my own hand. Tell me about it. The night Elaine died, it was raining, remember? There was thunder and lightning. David wanted her to stay with us overnight. She said no. She wanted to walk home in all that rain. That long, long walk home through the park. I should have made her stay. It was my fault. I should have made her stay. I now, Miss Finley, now, now stop it. Stop it. It's not your fault. It happens that way sometimes. It's not your fault. It is. It is. It's time for you to pick up David, isn't it? Oh, yes. I'll be late. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. I'll go pick up David. Well, that's better. That's much better. Uh, Miss Finley... There was a name on Elaine's engagement book, uh, Elsa Weaver. Do you know her? No, but I've heard Elaine talk about her. She's a society editor on the Globe. Are you going to talk to her, too? Yes. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Thank you for your kindness. <laughs> You say you're a policeman, Mr. Guthrie? That's right. I was trying to match you with a profession when you walked into my office. Funny, I didn't think policeman. May I ask exactly what it is you do in this office, Miss Weaver, as society editor? Elsa Weaver. Yes, I know that's your name, but... Elsa Weaver, I hear rumors and write innuendos. I'm a columnist, society. You seriously didn't know who I am? Miss Weaver, I want to talk to you about Elaine Kirk. Why me? Your name was found on Elaine's person when she was killed. Oh? Why? You tell me why. My name was found on Elaine's person regarding what? On her engagement list. She came to see you. She certainly did. Why? Well, now I've got to answer you, don't I? Elaine Kirk came to me to announce her wedding to David Finley. She told me that so I could put it in the papers. People tell me things, I put it in the papers. Each Friday I draw a check. Neat. Doesn't it bother you that Elaine was killed? I loathed her. I make up my mind about people, and I keep it that way. Elaine is dead, one less person to loathe. All right, so you're honest about it. Let's keep that that way. Sure. Why did you hate Elaine? The reasons a woman has for hating another woman. The reasons a woman makes up her mind about another woman. Like what? Elaine Kirk was a beautiful girl, and she knew it. That's what made her intolerable. Her beauty, her brains, her capacity for enjoying herself, it sickened me, that's all. Did you know a friend of hers, Janet Irish? Casually. I think about this, Miss Weaver, it's important. Was there anything these two girls had in common, shared? Of course. What? 
Frank Bennett. Frank Bennett? That Hulk. That gorgeous boy with the hair, and the smile, and the black eyes. How well did you know him? Arm's length. That's one of my burdens. Let me tell you how it was, Mr. Guthrie. When I knew Frank, he was engaged to Elaine Kirk. Janet Irish was Elaine's friend. So? So? Join me in my thoughts. Frank Bennett was never lonely. Am I clear, Mr. Guthrie? came back to tell me that Elaine wanted David and not me. That's why you came back? No, Frank. David, with his condition, <laughs> creates a big pity in people, you know, like he did in Elaine. So much pity that she just had to marry him. See, I knew the answer all the time. Drink, Lieutenant, help yourself. You told me Elaine was something very special to you. Uh, you told me. I agreed with you. What about Janet Irish? Huh, from left field, Lieutenant. From out of nowhere, like a bolt from the blue. Why do you spring Janet Irish on me all of a sudden? I hear she was something special, too. To me? Mm-hmm. Well, what you hear is a lie. What does a policeman have to do to hear a lie like this? Where does he go? Janet Irish, Frank. Tell me about oh, her. Oh, to Elsa Weaver, perchance, you went for this about me and Janet. Well, you went to the right place. That Elsa's a bitter girl. Frank doesn't light Elsa's cigarette. Open doors for Elsa. Kiss Elsa goodnight. For not doing these things and more, Elsa loathes Frank. <laughs> Makes up lies about him and Janet, about him. Then what's the truth, Frank? That's all I want. Well, Janet was a pretty girl. Janet was Elaine's best friend, and if she hadn't been, I wouldn't have looked at her twice. Janet was not one to make me hungry for her. The truth. Janet was killed in a hit and run a year ago on August 2nd. Elaine was killed the same way also on August 2nd. We know it was murder. You think Janet was murdered, Frank? Well, that's your department to think about things like that. If it was murder, they could have been murdered for the same reason. You know, it's interesting the way you come to me to think things out. You use my place, you take my time. Not that I mind. You know the girls very well, Frank. Only Elaine, I told you. Elaine. Did she ever tell you anything about Janet? Some secret they shared? Some. Well, there was a thing, but it wasn't a secret. Oh, what was it? Well, it was Elaine and Janet that made David Finley what he is today. What are you talking about? Happened up in Canada on a lake. David, he was a stranger to the girls. He was swimming, and the girls were in a motorboat. They didn't see David. They ran him down. Hit him in the back with the boat. Paralyzed him from the waist down. That's what the girls did to David upon meeting him. I never read anything about it. Well, it didn't come out till months later. David didn't want it to come out. When it finally did, it wasn't news. That's why you didn't read it in the papers. Why didn't David want it known? You never saw Elaine, did you, Lieutenant? To be crippled by a girl like that, well, that could be a caress. You leaving me, Lieutenant? Without a goodbye, without a thank you. Goodbye, Frank. Thank you. What took you so long, Matt? I've been waiting 15 minutes. Take it easy, Ben. I had to find somebody to take over the lineup for me. What do you got? Answers. And a murderer. Come on. In here. Oh, Lieutenant Guthrie, please come in. And you, too, the lieutenant's friend. This is Sergeant Greb, Miss Finley. How do you do, Sergeant? Hello. You want to see David, don't you? He's in his room. I'll go get uh, him. Not yet. Uh, I think we want to talk with you. We want to tell you we know who killed Elaine Kirk. I told you I did. Mm-hmm. Let's go in here and sit down. Yes, of course. Sit here, Lieutenant. Sergeant, you're right over there. <sighs> Miss Finley killed Elaine Kirk? Yes, I did. I explained it to the lieutenant. If I had insisted that Elaine stay here that night, nothing would have happened to her. I would have taken care of her. I see. Oh, no, you don't, man. What? The way I figure it, Matt, the person who killed Elaine Kirk also killed Janet Irish. Miss Finley, did you kill Janet? Who? The lieutenant said Janet, Janet Irish. Oh, no, I hardly knew her. Well, I'll tell you something else, Matt. Whoever killed Janet and Elaine 
had the identical motive. I want my brother in here with me. All right. Uh, Ben. Relax. Hello, Mr. Guthrie. My sister tells me the other gentleman is Sergeant Greb. That's right, David. She also tells me you know who killed Elaine and Janet. That's also right. Tell me, David, how long ago did you have your accident? Two years ago. On August 2nd? Yes. How are you getting along? Pretty good. Swimming, the exercises I take. I even drive a car. I'm making progress. Before long, I'll even be able to take care of myself. Oh, David. David, it'll be a long time. You know that. You know, it's all I've got now, time. Oh, I'm glad your sister brought you in here, David, so I can tell you who killed Elaine and Janet. Someone who despised them for what they did to you. Elaine made it up to me. She made it up a thousand times. Miss Finley. Yes? Tell us how you killed Janet Irish. I told you I hardly knew her. You ran over her a year ago on August 2nd. Killed her with a car. Like you killed Elaine yesterday on August 2nd. With a car. Both of them on the anniversary of your brother's accident. Oh, no, I didn't. David, tell them I didn't. Dorothy. Tell them. I can't. I can't tell them that. David! You're the only one who could have hated them so much. I did it for you. For you, David. For what they did to you. A cripple. Look at you. A helpless cripple. You? My sister? Yes, I killed Janet. But with Elaine, I waited. I saw it was happening. She was falling in love with you, David. The longer I waited, the more she had to lose. One year of loving you. And then I killed her. Then I killed her. Oh, take her out of here. And hold away on you, David. Elaine, could she have done that? A cripple. Take her out of here. Matt. Uh Uh-huh. You better come with us, Miss Finley. David. 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 The lineup was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and stars William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb. Music was composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Peggy Weber, Ann Stone, Lillian Bayef, Howard McNear, Lou Krugman, Sheldon Leonard, and Larry Dobkin. <laughs> has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.